So, um, I'm doing a PhD in philosophy. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not terrible, isn't it? Um, I always kind of feel like I should apologize when I tell people that, because, you know, absolute conversation killer. You know, you tell someone you're doing philosophy, you get the look. Uh, you all know exactly what the look is, believe me. It's, it's a mixture of disgust and pity. It's the sort of look you usually reserve for people like Jehovah's Witnesses. Door-to-door um, -door charity workers. Um, conservative political candidates. Yeah, it's, you know, I say, it's awful, just complete awkwardness in the air. Um, recently discovered that my family have also been having this problem when they tell people what I'm doing, so in the latest Christmas letter they just said I'm a meth dealer. <laughs> uh, what's even worse though, is when it doesn't kill the conversation, you just get a question. It's usually, so what do you, you, know, what do, you do with a degree in philosophy? Um, you, know, you just end up stuttering, my mouth goes dry, desperately trying to come up with something about critical thinking or transferable skills. Um, you know, trying to basically justify the fact that what I do is I spend all my time reading insane syphilitic rants by a constipated German with a stupid moustache. <laughs> and I know full well I'm just confirming exactly what they already know, which is that I'm going to be putting those critical thinking skills to good use, asking the big questions in life. Would you like fries with that? <laughs> Have you heard the good news about Jehovah? <laughs> yeah. uh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Stephen, we already know philosophy is a dead end degree. Why are you telling us all this? The um, thing is, this actually ties into my research. I'm very interested in this. It's why I refer to as a ritual. Now, rituals are usually talked about in a sort of religious sense. Um, part of my thesis is looking at them as applied to all human behaviour. A ritual is essentially a set of rehearsed, repeated actions carried out. That is, they either reinforce or create a form of identity within the participants. In many ways, this is actually a ritual that we're doing just now. Uh, you know, I'm telling jokes, you laugh at them. My uh, deep seated need for approval and acceptance gets seated for a few hours. Um, yeah, so those are rituals. I think all human behaviour can be described in terms of rituals. Uh, at this point, it's like detour to talk about a concept called the magic circle. Sadly, this isn't Paul Daniels type stuff. This is a this is a theory used often by game designers when discussing play. It's this idea of the area around the play that separates the game from the real world. It sort of seems to show up in rituals. Um, part of this is very interesting because the magic circles, as they're often done, are being drawn by sort of witches and the like, and they either protect what's inside the circle or what's outside the circle. This ties nicely back into stand-up comedy, actually. In one of his more controversial routines, Stuart Lee drew a magic circle to stand in before he went into this wonderfully offensive, blasphemous rant. Um, he did this because Stuart Lee's a coward. Um, <laughs> The magic circle should actually be around the entire room because, as I said, the audience is part of the ritual. It's very important there. I'm very interested as well in how these rituals that we're all taking part in can be manipulated to sort of maybe change the reactions and the responses of the audience to philosophical arguments, whatever. You know, good old-fashioned propaganda. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of rituals within academia. Uh, the classic one is when you, the ritual of writing a paper which you then mail off to an editor for the journal, you get a reply back saying that reviewer 2 says that everything you've said is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or the wonderful ritual when you go to a conference, you give a 20 minute presentation of your work, someone in the audience gets up and tells you why everything you've said is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. I actually love academia. You know, I love these rituals. They're absolutely fantastic. But as we've already established, I'm completely wrong, so what do I know? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing that I've got all these rituals, though, because, you know, I'm a self-funded PhD, colloquially an idiot. <laughs> that basically means that because I'm so poor and impoverished and all my money's going to the university, I don't get to take part in a lot of the major life rituals that a lot of my peers and friends have. You know, things like getting married, getting a house, getting a real job. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a really bad effect. So, you know, my girlfriend's mother has informed me that I'm not marrying her daughter until I finish my PhD. 
Uh, as you can imagine, this is, you know, an absolutely fantastic reason to get on with it. <laughs> it turns out I've got an absolute fear of commitment. <laughs> and marriage weddings are a really big ritual, and that's scary, that is. You get married to someone, you're stuck with them for the rest of your life, and that's awful, I don't want to do that, so... <laughs> Instead, I'm just going to spend as much time as I can in a committed relationship with my thesis, which I can't disappoint. Uh, the good thing here, though, is I've become very good at procrastination as a result. Uh, if you any sort of form of procrastination, avoiding ideas, avoiding work, avoiding writing, I know exactly how to do them. Happy to give you any tips. Um, if you'd like some advice on how to procrastinate, get in touch with me if you can be bothered. Um, uh, you know, just wait until some really inappropriate moment when you're on your own in the house, um, not sure what to do, about to have a bath or something, and the doorbell will ring. I'll be standing right there with a copy of the Watchtower to tell you all about the King of the Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs>